Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, web design, freelancing, and more. We're already mostly just sitting at home and watching online classes, so why not learn something tangible and develop your creative side? There's so many lessons on painting, productivity, web development, and a whole slew of other topics that you can't really go wrong with Skillshare. This series on productivity, for example, by fellow future attending physician Ali Abdal, is quite good when you're stuck in a productivity rut. And best of all, Skillshare is quite reasonably priced for us debt-ridden college students. It's less than $10 a month for an annual subscription. And if that sounds good, there's an additional kicker. Because Skillshare is sponsoring the video, the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So click the link in that description and make this pandemic year a productive one. Greetings students and welcome back to my series on quantum mechanics. In the last video we partially solved Schrodinger's equation using separation of variables and introduced the time-independent Schrodinger equation. In this video we're going to discuss the separable solution to Schrodinger's equation and talk about entities called stationary states. Recall from the previous video that we came up with the following solution for the Schrodinger equation via separation of variables. We didn't know small psi of x because we still had to solve the time-independent Schrodinger equation. If you take the psi out of the entire expression on the left to obtain equation 1, you'll end up with this somewhat familiar looking operator that's operating on the psi. Now why is this familiar looking? Well, it's because if you take the square of the momentum operator, you'll get h bar over i times the partial with respect to x times h bar over i times the partial with respect to x, which is negative h bar squared times the second partial with respect to x, since i squared is negative 1. If you then divide that by 2m, you'll get exactly the first term on the left of equation 1. Again, this is obtained from calculating p squared over 2m in operator terms, of course. The term next to the p squared over 2m is the potential energy operator v. Now, if you recall classical mechanics, you might remember that p squared over 2m is the kinetic energy. Just substitute p equals mv and you'll see why. And v is the potential energy. Their sum is the total energy, which is also called the Hamiltonian. So really, the operator on the left is something we can define as the Hamiltonian operator or h hat, which is given by the following expression, the sum of the kinetic and potential energy operators. So the time-independent Schrodinger equation is given by h hat operating on psi equals e times psi, where e is some constant. I'll call this equation 2. Anyway, back to our separable solutions to the Schrodinger equation. These separable solutions are also called stationary states. But why are they stationary? Well, if we determine the probability distribution corresponding to the wave function psi of x comma t, which is just the magnitude squared of capital psi, then we'll find that the time exponential from psi and psi conjugate cancel out and multiply to 1. So in the end, we'll only be left with the modulus squared of the small psi of x. So the probability distribution corresponding to this wave function does not change with time, it's only dependent on the small psi of x. Another special feature is that the expectation value of variables that can be extracted from this wave function also do not change with time. Let me prove this to you. So the expectation value of a quantity q corresponding to a wave function psi, which is generally a function of position and momentum, is given by the following integral. Substituting psi and psi conjugate gives us the following. Now the q hat operator is only a function of the x and p operators. The x operator is just x, while the p operator involves a derivative in x. Neither of these have any dependence on time, so we can just take out the exponential term that is being operated on by q hat, and treat that exponential term as a constant, effectively, with respect to q hat. When we do that, we can get the exponentials to once again cancel each other out, after which we'll be left with the following expression for the expectation value of q. Now this obviously doesn't depend on time, it contains only the small psi, which is a function of x. So these two findings, the finding that the probability distribution of our wave function 
doesn't depend on time, and the other finding that the expectation value of quantities relevant to our wave function doesn't depend on time. These two findings should demonstrate why these separable solutions to Schrodinger's equation are called stationary states. It's because the probability distribution and expectation values are all stationary with time. The next important point about these separable solutions are that they correspond to states of fixed total energy. Why is that? Well, let's first bring up the time-independent Schrodinger equation written in energy form, which is basically equation 2. We know from the calculations we just did that the separable solutions to the Schrodinger equation correspond to stationary states. Their corresponding expectation values are fixed in time and can be written using just the solution of the time-independent Schrodinger equation as follows. If we use this rule to take the expectation value for the total energy or the Hamiltonian, we'll get the following expression. Now from equation 2, h hat operating on psi just gives us the constant e times psi. We can take that constant e out of the integral to get e times the integral of the modulus of small psi squared. Now I showed you earlier that the modulus of small psi squared was the same as the modulus of big psi squared. After all, big psi is a stationary state, and since they're both the same, the normalization condition holds for both of them, so this integral is also 1. Therefore, the expectation value of the Hamiltonian is just e. So now it should make sense why we named our constant from the separation of variables e. It's because e represents the expectation value of the Hamiltonian, aka the total energy. So now we know the expectation value of h, but what about the variance of the h? We can find the variance using this formula, sigma h squared equals the expectation value of the Hamiltonian squared minus the square of the expectation value of the Hamiltonian. We know that the expectation value of the Hamiltonian is e, but what about the expectation value of h squared? Again, we use the exact same logic as we did previously. This expectation value of h squared is the integral from negative infinity to infinity of psi conjugate times the operator h hat squared, which is operating on psi of x. The small psi is once more used here because the separable wave function solution to Schrodinger's equation is stationary, so its expectation values do not depend on time, which is why the time portion goes away as we showed previously for the generic operator q. Now h hat squared is just h hat operating on h hat operating on psi, but h hat operating on psi is just e psi from equation 2, therefore h hat squared operating on psi is h hat operating on e times psi, and since e is a constant we can take it out and be left with h hat operating on psi, which is once again e times psi. So therefore, the final answer for h hat squared psi is just e squared psi. If we plug this into our integral for the expectation value of the Hamiltonian squared, we'll get e squared times the integral from negative infinity to infinity of the modulus of small psi squared. By the normalization condition, this integral just becomes 1. So we can then conclude that the expectation value of the Hamiltonian squared is just e squared. If we plug this into our variance equation for the Hamiltonian, we'll find that the variance of the Hamiltonian is e squared minus e squared, which is just zero. Now what does this all mean? It means that the expectation value for the Hamiltonian is a constant, which we've called e. In addition, this constant does not change, it has zero spread. For a wave function that is a separable solution to the Schrodinger equation, every measurement of the total energy will give us e, there is no uncertainty in the total energy of a separable wave function. It is always definite and fixed. A wave function obtained from solving Schrodinger's equation by separation of variables therefore has a constant and definite value for the total energy or Hamiltonian. Now, the separable solution I have for Schrodinger's equation isn't exactly unique because there are infinitely many of these solutions that satisfy the PDE and the normalization condition. So we could simply write each of these individual solutions using a subscript n as an index. Now because our PDE is linear, we can say that any linear combination of these individual solutions would also be a valid solution. So the most generic possible solution we can come up with is 
the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a n times small psi n of x times tau n of t, where the a n's are just coefficients of the linear combination. Now you might wonder, if any linear combination of these solutions works in terms of satisfying Schrodinger's equation, how is our solution even meaningful and unique? After all, I could use whatever I want for these coefficient values and come up with something that properly satisfies the PDE and normalization condition. Well, although I could do that, there is only one linear combination with a particular set of coefficients that satisfies the initial condition. So this initial condition really ensures that we end up with a unique linear combination and thus a meaningful solution. An important thing to note is that each of these individual solutions indexed by n corresponds to a particular value of the energy E, which I'll call E sub n. So in conclusion, the overall separable solution capital Psi would be written as follows. And this overall solution is essentially a composite of different wave functions with different energy states En. Now what's the significance of the constants An? Well, I'll show you later that the modulus squared of An is the probability that a measurement of the energy state of this composite wave function would give you En. And since this is a probability, it would then follow that the sum of all an squares is 1. And just to clear up any confusion beforehand, each of the individual component wave functions psi n has a definite total energy given by en. There is no variance to this energy, it's always the same with every measurement. However, if we combine these component wave functions with a definite energy, the resulting wave function has probabilities corresponding to each energy. It has variance in the energy distribution. So individual wave functions psi n have no energy variance, but the composite wave function capital psi does. Finally, using the fact that a n squared represents the probability of measuring e n, we can come up with the expectation value for the Hamiltonian as the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a n squared times e n. Anyway, that should do it for this video. In the next lesson, I'm going to prove some important theorems related to stationary states and the separable solutions to the Schrodinger equation. I'd like to thank the following patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher, and if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.